Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about auditioning. I often share my audition experiences on my Instagram, especially my Instagram stories, and I'm so surprised at the amount of you who are surprised that someone that you've already seen on TV and in movies still has to audition. And the fact of the matter is that most actors do, unless you're Brad Pitt, you're not just getting offered the best parts every day. You have to go out and fight for them. So let's talk a little bit about auditioning. I'm not gonna go into how to get auditions. That might be for another video or you just have to figure it out on your own. But here you are, the audition has come in. Step number one is going to be to read the full script if it's provided for you. No excuses here, make the time, read the full script. If they give you the sweet, sweet gift of telling you in the script what song they'd like playing during that scene, go ahead and give it a listen. It'll give you a really good idea of the tone and vibe they're going for with the project. If it's a TV show, watch at least a few episodes of it to give you an idea for the tone and pace of the show. If it's a well-known director, go ahead and check out their work. Their past work will often give you an indication of their style and what they might be looking for with this project. Same goes for writers. Some writers have a really distinct style, and if it's an Aaron Sorkin show, you better be familiar with how to deliver Aaron Sorkin dialogue. You should also try to familiarize yourself somewhat with the casting director, what they've cast in the past, and your own history with their office. That also goes for casting associates and casting assistants, because associates become assistants who become casting directors. Now, putting a look together. I might go a little further with this than some actors do, and you certainly don't have to, but I find that clothing and hair and makeup really helps me to get into character and can affect the way I carry myself. So I keep an array of clothing and shoes and accessories on hand uh, for a bunch of different characters. And then I have a bunch of different ways of styling my hair and doing my makeup to hint at that character's reality. This will extend into things like body language, how a character carries themselves, how they enter a room, what they do with their hands. Then you get into how they speak. Are they boisterous and loud and talk over other people? Are they shy and keep their head bowed? Are they confident, empowered, sure of themselves? Are they struggling, depressed, insane? traumatized, dignified, sharp-witted, athletic, silly. All of these things are going to affect how your character walks, talks, and behaves. Now comes memorization. Everyone has a different method, but here's exactly what I do. First of all, I print my sides. For those of you who don't know, sides are a portion of the script that you'll be reading for the audition, typically between one to three scenes. I like to print my sides tiny. I don't deal with that full page nonsense. I find it way too cumbersome for the audition. So I'm not sure how you do it on a PC, but if you're on a Mac, you simply go to print, then select copies per page two. I just find that tiny sides are much less cumbersome during my audition. I also always keep my sides with me during the audition. If you go up on a line, it's better to have them than not, but I'm almost always off book. I just have them because it's much better to have them to reference if you get absolutely stuck. I highlight my character's lines and then I record the other character's lines in a voice note on my phone, leaving a space for my character to respond. That way I can essentially run lines with myself as much as I want to before the audition. Is she gonna make it? Time will tell. What she went through was extremely traumatic, but the surgery was a success. Your sister owes you her life. But she can never know how. Or rather, who? As you wish. But it's extraordinary that they were a match. Amanda's heart was damaged beyond repair. If you hadn't volunteered victorious for transplant. It's what mother would have wanted. When I do this, I'm not memorizing performance. I'm memorizing words only. And I run them back super flat with no emotion. The goal here is to have your lines so completely memorized that in the moment, you can do whatever you want with them. There's nothing worse than memorizing a performance and then going onto your set and your director gives you a note and you can't change your performance because you've memorized it a certain way. You're memorizing words, not performance. At least that's what I do. After all that memorization work is done, you have to trust that those words will be there 
and they will. Remember that preparation equals freedom. The more you prepare, the more free you can be in that moment. Okay, so all the prep is done. You're dressed, you're ready. Now you're in the room. Take your moments. Start when you're ready. Take a deep breath. Stand your ground. Find good posture. Find open body language. Look the casting director in the eye. Smile. Take a moment. It's your moment to take. Don't get weird with it and take like several minutes before you begin. But just know that you can take your time to stand there, to occupy space in this world and to give a performance. They say if you don't know what you're doing, better to get it over quickly. I've had a few lovers who've employed this principle. <laughs> so don't be that person. Don't be the person ashamed of what you're doing and rushing through it. Take a moment, stand your ground. Find your voice, find your point of view. Remember your objective in the scene and then begin. The casting director will be looking into your eyes during your performance, looking for truth. If you don't believe yourself as that character, why would anyone else? On this note, beware of indicating. Indicating is acting as if you are the character. You are impersonating that character. I need you to go inside, find a part of you that is that character, and fully inhabit them. Better to fully inhabit the character so that you are the vessel through which that character is presented. If you don't feel it, we won't either. The camera sees everything. On that note, your task is not to win the part. If that's your task, the camera will pick that up. Your task is to get him to admit he's still in love with you. To get her to admit to the crime. To connect with a parent that's long been neglectful of you. Whatever your character's task is in the scene, that is your task in the audition. If that isn't your task, you're wasting your time because the camera will know the truth. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Nerves. I think that's the part of auditioning that most of us struggle with the most. And the only way that I've found to get over nerves is to be so completely in the moment that there's no room for you to feel insecure or wonder if you're good enough. You need to be so completely in that character that that's no longer a concern. Your character's not worried about being nervous for an audition. So there's not room for you to be either. Now, if you get nervous for your auditions, you might be considering doing something to take the edge off. Maybe taking a little shot of spirits before your audition or taking a beta blocker or something else. But I'll be honest with you, I've tried everything under the sun and the only thing that I find to be truly helpful in manipulating my mental state in a way that's beneficial for the audition is meditating. So now you've gotten through it, the audition's over. What do you do now? Do you sit and agonize over how it went, what they thought of you, how you could have done better? No. You just let it go. You let it go, you can reflect on it, you can learn from it. Let every audition be an education in what to do or what not to do. <laughs> but then you let it go. The truth is, you are not going to get most of the jobs you audition for, and that's okay. That's all of us. You should also consider that every audition for this casting director and everyone who might see your tape after the fact is kind of a precursor to the next audition you might get or the next job you might book. I want you to take each audition as a learning experience. Even if you didn't hit every moment that you wanted to or you have some regrets about it, use that to learn for the next time and improve. Like anything else, auditioning is a skill. So thank you so much for joining. I hope you've enjoyed, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. You might just see them answered in a future video. Bye, guys.